Hi folks, it's Dr. Christine Sauer here again and today I'm talking about this Medscape article that caught my eye about how to prescribe food as medicine. Now it seems there's a lot of conflicting information. Some people say it doesn't work, other people say it does work. No wonder the people are completely confused as how to address their chronic illnesses, obesity and uh, being overweight and all the uh, conditions that come with that. Uh, with food, what should we eat? What is good to eat? What is not good to eat? And the truth is, it is important, yes, but it is more important than to follow some guidelines that some expert put together to follow our own intuition about what to eat according to our culture, our background, our genetics, our preferences, our upbringing, the foods available in the area where we live, and then consider food quality over quantity. If you can eat good healthy food, like, and I described exactly what that consists in my little book, Eating for Vibrant Health and Explosive Energy. I'm just working on the second edition. And it is so important to eat foods that are suitable for your individual body. And it is not the same for everybody. Now, food as medicine sounds nice. A whole food, predominantly plant-based diet, has been shown to prevent, treat, and even reverse some chronic diseases. There have studies where it worked. There have been studies that it doesn't work. And usually people cannot stick to a diet like that for long. <laughs> people love the idea of diets. And diet is a Greek word that means lifestyle and it makes sense of course we want to adjust our lifestyle to what a good life a natural life a life full of passion purpose and energy requires now our physicians tell us they know what to eat but they prescribe a standard food plan and it doesn't make sense for all for some it does, <laughs> lifestyle medicine prescription for John Doe. Okay, I will add three handful of dark leafy greens. It doesn't say anything about the quality of those dark leafy greens. To each weekday lunch for the next two weeks, I will reduce red meat to one time per week for the next two weeks. Now there's a general bias against red meat. It doesn't make sense because the same as with plant food, with animal food, it is important where the food comes from, how the animals are raised and how they are fed. The fat, for example, in red meat is extremely different in its quality, whether the beef, for example, is grass fed or grain fed. Beef is not naturally grain fed and the omega-3-6 ratio, the inflammatory ratio is very different in grain fed beef, which is unhealthy from feedlots to grass fed beef, which is the natural way cows eat. That's why they have seven stomachs so they can digest all that grass. Now smart goals are nice. The problem with smart goals is they don't work if you don't start with dumb goals. Now I'll teach you what dumb goals are in my programs and here too. And if you want to know beforehand, just let me know. That's it for today. And we'll talk again about soulful nutrition and weight loss and the art of soulful living. Bye-bye.